I'm gonna show you how great I am. Everything around you that you call life was made up by people that were no smarter than Everybody you. has time. Stop watching lost. I love what I do, and that's why I'm doing what I love. Welcome to Welcome Semi Weekly. So basically, I hope you can't hear my chair moving too much, but it's just me this week. I'm just sitting down talking about my sort of exam progress. Um, P.S. I'm just going to pour myself a cup of tea. If you're watching online, you can see this is actually real. I'm not just faking this. I just wanted to see what that sounded like on my mic. I might not even include that, but we'll see. Um, basically, what I want to talk about this week is I want to talk about my time studying because I tried to do a podcast on this earlier, but I don't think it included enough. But now I think since I finished my final exams with really good grades, I uh, was really happy with my grades. And I'm going to use my grades to put a punchy title on this video slash podcast slash whatever else this is going to become. Um, basically, the title of this video is going to be How I Got Straight A's. I didn't get straight A's. I got A's and a B. B plus. So I nearly got straight A's. And one thing that I think this is quite remarkable because I've never, during school at, in Auckland, we have, we have achieved, which is good. We have merit, which is even better than that and then we have excellence which is the best possible possibly the best one you can get so i in my last year of school i got one excellence grade and then the you get a ton of grades in my sort of schooling so i got one excellence grade it was like four percent of my total year and then i got probably the rest of it would have been the majority of it would have been in the merit achieved sort of range like I was, I was kind of scraping by like I was doing all right but I was doing like say in America I was getting B's I was getting B's and I was pretty happy with a B like that was what I was about what I was getting and even last semester that's what I was getting I was getting B's I was getting A's I was I mean like I was getting B's and I was getting C's so I, I wasn't really doing that well but then this semester something changed because I went from doing general health science doing more podiatry so basically that what that means is it's a lot more specialized and it's a lot more like it's a lot more actually focused on the work and it's a lot more there's no messing around and I thought I'd like to give you guys some insights on how I got basically straight A's in a decently hard course by pretty much spending as few hours as possible studying that was my goal is just to spend as little as I can and get good grades and I achieved that and I think I did quite well and I think I'm just going to give you guys some insights on how I did that why I did that and my sort of thought process and different ways I do it but yeah so one thing that I'd just like to point out first of all is there's a few different things that I've written down little different topics I want to cover some of the main topics that I want to come up cover is eliminating distractions efficiently studying so method you know hacks all that kind of thing if there is hacks if they exist doing studying that is productive and isn't sort of just sort of doing the best studying that you can be doing and then talking about how hard you should be trying all the time when you're studying that kind of stuff and just general work ethic but yeah that's just the general overview of the things I want to talk about I'm also going to talk about multi choice questions and why I think there's different ways that you can approach them but yeah so first of all, I'd like to talk about eliminating distractions, and I think this is a, an, an absolute pillar of getting good grades, because the reason I didn't want to spend many hours doing it is because I wanted to do the podcast, and I wanted to actually do, you know, earn money doing a job and stuff like that, and just do other things, go to the gym, all this kind of stuff, and I wanted to sort of, in a way, I sort of treated that like, coming up to my final exams, I had won a huge assessment where most of my time was, was put onto that, so then I had two weeks to study for my final exams. It's not a short amount of time, but it's really not long. If you have one week until your first exam, and then the rest of your exams are scattered throughout the next week, it's it's not a long time. So I really only had one week before my exams started. So that's not long when it comes to university study terms. But... The main thing that I tr pr tried to prioritize was I eliminated any distractions. And I'll just go. I'll I'll go into that more. But 
and I also delegated as many things as possible. So instead of doing a lot of hours at a job or doing other things like that or going to the gym heaps, I had to just set off the gym, not go to the gym and sort of get an exercise when necessary because I think if you listen to a podcast called College Info Geek, they really do ex- em- emphasize the usefulness of exercise on your brain and also there's other great books. I mean, it's Spark, The Revolutionary Science of Exercise. It's a really good book about how you how you can use exercise to make you more productive in other areas, and I think it's a really good book. But yeah, so when it comes to eliminating distractions, I think one of the main things that you should do over the few weeks that you're studying is eliminate people distractions. And the way you do that is you sort of pick and choose the people that you actually can hang out with. And also pick those things that you're going to do with those people. For example, say if I wanted to hang out with one of my one of my mates that goes to the gym, right? That's a quite a productive thing to do because I can go hang out with him at the gym. We can have talk. We can we can talk. We can chat. We can do the gym, and then I've knocked out gym and I've knocked out hanging out with my friend. It's it's not as binary to see your friends as tasks, but you can't, like during times when you're very stressed and you don't have much time, you've got to sort of treat them as tasks. Also, if you've got to do the, the bare minimum you can to maintain the relationship. It sounds robotic and fucked up, but it's. I, I think it's the, the, bit, the best thing to do because you're actually going to spend tons of time thinking you're relaxing. But I think there is, when it, when it comes to relaxing during exam time, I think there is a useful, it's, it's useful. And I think there are a lot of benefits to actually relaxing during exam time. But I think there's there's a limit to it. So you don't want to be spending more than, say, Genuinely, if I had to guesstimate how much on on a, on a 100% efficient, optimal day of mine, if how much of that I want to spend relaxing, I would have to guess like one hour, two hours maximum. It's it, For some people, I feel like that sounds like it's a lot, but that's including things like taking five minutes to go on your phone, to even go for a walk, stuff like that. Like you've got it all incorporated. So the way... I did that is I would do I would I would make my relaxing time really really efficient this is called high density relaxation and basically this is something that I didn't think is quite useful but something that I actually tried out is I am a very addict I have a very addictive personality when it comes to things like video games I just get so sucked into things but one thing that I knew is now I've got really good um, discipline when it comes to just holding off doing something that I want to do but I know it's just short term so I got my old laptop out. It's a gaming computer, you know, It's that's what it's for. So I downloaded a few games on there and I got ready to play the games. Um, so during exams, I would play from one to two hours a day of video games at the end of the night, whenever, or I would do something completely just off the topic. Not even like, and one thing that I think is really stupid is multitasking. Unless it's something like going for a walk and doing Quizlet, which I think is really cool. Quizlet is like cue cards. I'll explain more about it later. I think it's one of the best methods of studying. But basically, I think you should never multitask unless there's there's like a good, decent reason for it. Like, for example, when I was talking before about my friend and how I'll go to the gym with him, we'll catch up and go to the gym. That's I think that's a good version of multitasking. But it's not really multitasking in the sense. Like, by multitasking, I mean, oh watch a video about the topic that you're studying while you fuck around and play video games or something. It's never going to sink in. It's just never going to happen. But walking and listening to a podcast about the topic you're trying to learn, I think that's a good idea because you're focusing on walking and you just your mind is wandering while you walk. It's Walking is a very, very easy task. But yeah. Um, so when it comes to eliminating distractions... It's a hard thing to do because people have their cell phones, they have, I mean, their, their smartphones, their phones, whatever, and you, they have Instagram, they have all these notifications coming through. But one thing that I think is really useful is to either turn off the notifications, which I've done for, I only have turned off the notifications for Instagram and Facebook. For everything else, it's generally just when someone is contacting me, like say for Messenger, Facebook Messenger, if you're not aware. Um, During exam time, I didn't really, I just sort of blocked it out. It wasn't something that I really focused on. But nowadays, how I like to do it is I like to have notifications off on Instagram and Facebook, 
but then keep them on for messenger text messages all that kind of stuff even snapchat just because it's usually one person contacting you and it's a bit different to hey this person tagged you in a, in a meme now I'll go scroll on facebook for half an hour it, it, it's very different because you don't want to i don't think there's ever a reason for you to go and scroll facebook for half an hour because it's, it's low density fun if you want to say it's just not really good fun like it's it's fun it's cool maybe you'll have a laugh or two but you're not going to be really like enjoying it you've got to do what you really love during those during those one to two relaxing hours a day because if you don't then there's going to be a lot of like sort of just wasted time and then you get to the end of the day and you'll be like what did i actually accomplish basically the goal during study time is to learn as much as possible in as short a time as possible i hope you can't hear whatever that truck car thing is it's pretty damn loud but Jesus Christ. I could feel that on my feet. Wow. Um, so basically, uh, the goal is to get as much study done as possible while staying sane, while getting getting an ad- adequate amount of sleep, getting, getting you know, eating eating okay, maybe, maybe exercising a little. Um, but your main task should be going and studying because what else? You know, you have a week until your exams. What else are you going to do? Like, it's, it's just the best thing. And Another thing that I think is incredibly important is your work ethic has to be on point because that, that I'd say that is the main thing that stopped me from getting that last A was my work ethic for that particular subject. That was the first subject that I studied for. Um, that My work ethic was not on point because I didn't sort of put in the work and realize how much work there really was because one thing that I think is really important is the quicker you start, the quicker you're going to learn more and get it all done. Because let's say, for instance, if you start two weeks, the thing that I think the, the one week, the one week out of exams really put on me is a lot of pressure. It put a lot of pressure on me to succeed and sort of made me realize, oh, shit, there's so much content. It feels impossible. So then instead of shying away from that and being sad, you have really got to be strong in times of exams, because if you're not, then you're just going to fall away and crumble. You've got, you've got to sort of look at those hard times and think, OK, yep. I had two options. I can work harder or I can be a fucking... I can just pussy out. And you had two options. So, one thing... Let's, I want to go into the specific specific things that really helped me study. So, one of them is looking for hacks. Um, I don't think there are that many hacks. I don't think that there are many things that really... Uh, that, thing, that, thing, that thing that's really going to help your productivity... Actually, no, I think I need to go back to eliminating distractions. So when it comes to eliminating distractions, there's two main services that I use. I use blocking notifications, that's one. And then I use, um, you know, blockers for being me basically going on my phone at all because you can block the stimulus that gets you into the phone, but then all the time you're going to be like, oh, I need to message this person. I need to do this. One way that I think is a really good way to get rid of that urge while you're studying is use apps have a little notebook with you that you can write down okay message Layla to tell her that I need pasta or something you know like something some errand you need to do um so yeah basically have a have a little notebook that you can write down okay this is what I need to do after I've done my session and one of the things that I find is really good is you do timed sessions with breaks the breaks don't include your don't count to your relaxation time at the end of the day I think you need genuine high long long periods of relaxation i think i think it is quite beneficial i don't think you need them but i think they're beneficial and i really think they do help and just sort of reduce a little a lot of stress and they really do stop you burning out um so the two apps that i like to use for you know keeping me off my phone and also the one that i like for my computer is really really good because it allows me to go on all the apps that I need, all the webs, all the websites that I need, that I genuinely need and will get benefits from. And it blocks things like YouTube, Facebook, um, Reddit, all that kind of stuff. But you can choose exactly what it blocks. So if you genuinely need YouTube, say if you're a YouTuber, and for some reason you're studying with YouTube, like you, and also that's one thing that I just think people need to be scared of. Okay, before I go on that, the two apps are Cold Turkey and Forest, because I'm gonna go on a tangent. Um, when you think about studying with YouTube, you've got to be very, very careful because 
with YouTube, there's a lot of things where you think you're studying, but really you're just sort of sitting there, you know, like this. Just the, the tongue out, just relaxing and just staring at the screen. But yeah, I think you really do have to be active in your actual, in your actual study methods. And this leads me to my next point, which sort of goes over So I think this leads me to my next point where it sort of goes over the, the, the study methods that are the most efficient. So the, the, the ones that are the most efficient or I find are the most efficient are there's this, this pie chart. I'll try and find, find it and put it in the description. Basically it sums up how you actually learn and the idea is writing notes is better than reading. Reading is sort of seen as the worst. Like if you read a book about Say if you're studying for anatomy. If you read a book about anatomy, you're not going to learn shit. If you write the notes and you write some things about the book, then you might learn a little bit more. Say you learn 20%, you learn 10% from reading. So with writing, you learn 20%. But then if you bump it up to answering questions, I reckon you learn a ton more. It feels more just like just a ton more. So I'd say you need to be answering questions at the very least. I'd say that's something like 50%. But I think the thing that helps the very, very most is teaching or putting yourself in the actual exam, exam situation and simulating the exam. So you say you have two hours for the, for the exam. Once you think you've studied all the topics, because I like to go topic by topic, and then I revise them all, and then I go and do the practice exam. Because that that is gonna be the most valuable two hours that you can ever have because if you can get your hands on a practice paper, which there are a lot online, there's lots of places to get them. I'll try and link some in the description. Um, if you can get your hands on that and you can do that, then that's going to really benefit you because if you don't do that, then you're going to go in there and you're not going to know what to where to start and how to approach it. But if you've basically done it before, it's a lot easier. And one thing that I used to find, I would when I was back at high school, I'd find that a lot of the time I would learn things in the exam which is never a good sign. You don't want to be learning as you go. You want to be, you want to know everything you have. You want to know everything before you get in there. It's cool to learn stuff, but not in the exam because you don't know what, what you're legitimately learning and what is just sort of your guessing. Um, so I think another, another thing that I think is really efficient is me and my podiatry friends, we all had a big uh, Google Drive, I mean a Google Doc, where we had questions that we had I think we found them at some point, at some point or, we wrote them, or we wrote them for one or, one or two of our exams and they really, really helped because we had a collaboration of 30 or so, I think 35 people and we were all chucking our knowledge into here trying to give equally, you know, 51, 49, Gary V, you give more than you take and then that sort of made it so we all got a benefit and no one really lost anything because when we're answering the questions in there, showing all our knowledge and learning and then answering the questions, in the thing basically we had draft questions um no one is losing there because we get to learn by answering the question because it's an efficient method and we get to see if we compare it to another person's answer we get to see what they've said and then they we can sort of c compare and contrast and see okay they said this let me research that and see if that's a, a thing or if they're incorrect or if they're just making assumptions you had to sort of figure that out and i think you also had to be vigilant when you are studying with other people because Personally, I would never actually try and get genuine study done with other people just because that's not how I study. Maybe that maybe you study really, really well with other people, but personally, I think you need to be able to study by yourself because you cannot leech off other people's knowledge. You just can't. It's impossible, and you can't really take it in unless they are teaching you, and you they are teaching you and making questions for you, and you are answering the questions, and they are correcting your questions. Teacher-student role, that works very well for both people. Because say if someone's at a B level and someone's at an A level, the A level person can teach the B level person while the A level person refines their knowledge and the B level person is learning new things. That's the general idea. And then the B level person can teach the entry level person, all that kind of stuff. So one thing that I was thinking of doing, and I might actually do this next year for one of my more general topics, it's called pharmacology. Basically, there's a lot of very, very shallow topics that aren't that deep but there's a lot of things, there's a ton of content and it's apparently a very hard subject. I was thinking, since teaching is the most efficient method, I would learn something, make a video on it, post it, 
and then I have effectively done the 50% method and then done the 90% of teaching because teaching is the most effective method. So I think that's something that, that is a good idea. If you do something like that or even you, if you just film it and pretend it's a real person and then you don't even put it anywhere, you just delete it. But the thing is, I think if you put it out there, then there's that pressure because if you're getting things wrong, you're teaching people the wrong thing. And you might not care about but care about that, but I think most people probably will. Um, and one thing that I think is really important is you need to know what you actually need to learn. This is one of the key things that I think helped me succeed is I very quickly learned what we actually needed to know instead of all these things like, oh, do we need to know this? Do we need to know this? Just searching the topic in, in YouTube and watching a video. Um, I looked at the university guidelines and looked at what they said and I examined, I would have spent about an hour, over an hour per paper just to see what they've actually written and what they actually want us to know. Because, and you need to know this stuff very well because then you know exactly what you should know. And also if you look at content that the university has produced in relation to this topic, then I think that's really good because they are showing exactly what they think is relevant then you, you get to learn exactly what is relevant. Because say, for instance, my university had one of the teachers, they made a few podcasts or vodcasts. They called them podcasts, but they were, you know, basically vlogs, but not vlogs. They were like podcasts, podcasts about the topics that we were learning. So they would do a, a vodcast on pharmacology. Oh, I, can't even, I can't even remember the topic names. It's literally been a few weeks. Wow, that's pretty bad, but... Um, I think those were really good because they showed me exactly what that teacher actually thought we needed to know. And I didn't know that. There's nowhere else you can find that on the internet. You can't be like, what does AUT want me to write down in my essay? Because no one who's written that down apart from the teachers in their books. And it might be online in your school website. We had one called Blackboard. It was really, really good. Um, you know, it's just a, a, a little thing. It was like a Facebook, but not, not really. But yeah, basically, there's, use all the resources that your university gives you. Like, in, during school, I I'd neglected it a lot because I didn't see it as important. I just did, okay, I can just Google it. And then I didn't get the best results for my time because I didn't put in the effort and I tried to just get by with the minimum work I could. But it was also the least efficient work. So I was trying to do it. The idea with my studying is I want to do it on the smallest number of hours but also put in maximum effort during those hours. I want those to be the most efficient hours and I still want to get the highest grades that I possibly can. And I genuinely think that anyone can get A's, literally anyone. During school, I've never, I've never really been seen as like the smartest person. Like uh, there's a few people, like a lot of the time I would be seen as like the dumb guy in a group just because I like, I like to play that role a bit and it's quite funny and I think it's hilarious. Like, like you know, asking dumb questions and stuff like that. I just think it's funny, but like the thing is the only thing that separates you from Sally who gets straight A's is work ethic and the smart work because you got to work smart you got to work hard that's one thing that I also think is very very important when it comes to exams is if you're not passionate about the topic that you're learning you're probably not going to do very well on the subject because if you sit there and you fucking mope about this subject and why you hate it you're never going to be good at it if it is a means to an end, like you know you like this subject and you know you like this topic, but there are a few classes that you really fucking hate, that's fine. Like there was one sub class this year, um, it was called Human Anatomy and Physiology, and I fucking hated it because it felt pointless. It felt completely pointless while all the others felt like they had so so much to them and they felt so useful and there was nothing wrong with them and they, they just were very, very practical. But... <laughs> For those subjects, my work ethic was on point. But then for my subjects that I didn't really like, I really had to dig, dig, dig like honestly dig deep. Um, one thing that I find if you're really struggling with motivation is way, way, way before exams, I reckon you need to figure out how you can fix your work ethic. And this can't just be like a one day thing where you, you try it and then you, you do one, two mental exercises and then you stop. It's like, I think you need to have a regimen and you need to know when to relax and you need to know when to keep working and you need to know you need to be consciously thinking all the time what is best for future James what is best best for future James that's what I, I think every single day because if I went and just fucked around every single day where would I be where would I get nowhere because 
the and one thing that I think is really really important to believe about life is that work actually matters so it's about the amount of work that you put in there was a long time in life where I felt like the amount of work I put in was irrelevant and Sally was just better at me at work well I'm saying Sally there is no Sally Sally is just a arbitrary person but I was just like rah 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 they're, they're, this person is just better at me these people are so much smarter they're just naturally smarter and you can think like that and maybe it's true but even if it's not you can work harder and probably get better grades name try and f- think of one time where someone worked harder and got worse grades like fuck off like come on <laughs> sorry for my obscene language this this podcast guys um but one thing that I think you can really do to motivate yourself more is literally, I did this for a long time, listen to motivational speeches. They are a lot of the time cheesy as fuck. They are a lot of the time not that, like, cool. But a lot of the time it's like, there's some really, really great ones. There's one I really, really like. It's uh, the ones about Conor McGregor are really good. The ones specifically for studying are really quite good. Um, there's this one about... Uh, I think it's I think it's called Dream or something, and you you got to find the right ones. There's a lot of this. They just reuse a lot of the same speeches, and it's just they're all on YouTube. Um, I really do think they're quite good. They really do pump you up. And if you're really 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 lacking motivation, go to those. Don't overuse them because then they'll have no effect, because they they'll just be useless. But yeah, go and use those. Um, another thing that I think you should really do is study in a way that you like if you hate answering questions then figure out another way that you can get that sort of benefit from another method if the only way that you really enjoy studying is taking notes but be honest with yourself with that i don't know why you would enjoy that because you don't learn from it there's not many benefits you don't don't get many endorphins there's no real reason to do it but yeah yeah no personally i think that also who you surround yourself with during those that those few weeks of studying is really really important um for myself i chose to surround myself with just my best friends and they were really over the last few years i've chosen to surround myself with really positive people who also care about me and want me to succeed so a lot of the time i'll talk to them i'll be like fuck i'm hating exams and they'll be like nah bro you got this just get that get that positive encouragement and if you don't for instance, if you literally don't have friends, and that's not a bad thing. Like, literally, I think that's such an efficient way to live, but I think it's robotic. Like, I've, I've thought so many times about, hmm, what if I just had no social life, and I just spent all my money on nothing, and I just invested all day and ate fucking oats, gym, and eat, gym, eat, sleep, stir, study, work, you know, no friends, haha, <laughs> but it's not realistic. Go and you need friends. But you need, you, need, you need to surround yourself with people who motivate you, so... Maybe during that relaxing two hours, either watch motivational people on YouTube, not just motivation, don't watch those motivational videos over and over again. They're just going to get boring and they're just not going to work. But for instance, one, some people that really help me with my mindset is people that I've had on the podcast. They're really, really, most of them are like really motivational people because they're doing things that most people don't do and they're doing things that are scary, that are scary. Um... I'll put a few people in the show notes who I think really inspire me and update and increase my mindset because you've got to find people who make you have a way better mindset. And yeah, you just, like, also find the things that you like in every day. Like, you've got to have fun studying. I remember I was sitting, if you're watching this on YouTube, I was sitting right over there. I was sitting in my little chair and I can't remember, but there was something that made me, oh, I was making cue cards and instead of just making them very binary and like boring ass cue cards the thing that i did is i basically made one of them it was like a rhyme i can't remember but i made one of them a rhyme but it was obviously like it i would know what it was oh it was pins and it was about pins and needles paresthesia means pins and needles pins and needles is that little tingly feeling that you get sometimes you don't move your limb or something um I think, oh, and I made Pims and Noodles. Was, I made, like, a joke about Pims and Noodles, and I think Pims is a drink and Noodles are Noodles. So it was just, like, a stupid, tiny little thing, but I just found it funny. Like, every time it came up in the cue card thing, I was like, ha-ha. Also, how to use cue cards. I think you cannot just copy, but 
what I did, literally this is what I did, and I think it's really efficient, is I would read the slides from the lectures all the way through, get the most relevant information, because my university had quite good slides. They might not, might not even be the best slides, but I think they were really good. But sometimes they were shit, because it depends on the lecturer. But So I would, I would find like a topic I would say, okay, if I see in here it's talking about paresthesia, this is what paresthesia is, this is how it affects people. Um, I would then go and say, what is paresthesia? And then I'd put the answer there. And then how does it affect, how does paresthesia affect people? And this, these are different cue cards. How does paresthesia affect people? Blah, blah, blah. And then, yeah. So basically you read the cue cards. Don't just copy them word for word and you interpret them in your own way. And then you write your interpretation in the answer thing. And I found it really works. One service that I really like, I really, really like it. It's probably the best thing. That's, I reckon that, that at least upped my grade from a B to a, an A. Like in the majority, like that thing helps so much because I would go for like a half an hour walk just up to, you know, just have a half an hour walk just around the place and I would just do some cue cards and it's just a really nice way to just chill because when you're doing cue cards, there's nothing really... You, you're not really thinking about anything else. You're just thinking about making the cue cards. I'm just thinking about you doing the cue cards. I don't li I tried to listen to music a few times. I don't recommend listening to music while studying. If you do, one thing that I found really, really helps when it comes to music during studying is listen to movie soundtracks because they are lively and they're usually quite good, but they don't have words. So some of my favorites, genuinely, this is not even a joke, um, Harry Potter, but if you're too into Harry Potter, then it can sort of, um, it can make you feel like you want to go watch Harry Potter, and that's one bad thing, but maybe you could watch that during your relaxing time, um, and also it's quite like, you know exactly what the scene, what scene the, um, song was from, so that's one bad thing, um, another one that I really like is Star Wars, Star Wars was really good, but I'm too into Star Wars, I love, I fucking love Star Wars, I had Star Wars posters just back there a while ago, but I took them down because I'm going to redecorate my room and make it look all pretty. But So Star Wars is good. Game of Thrones is actually really good. Season 7 was really good, the uh, sound, soundtrack. But the reason I like it is it's, it's just, I guess, epic. That's really, but it's just really, it, it's not a low, low down chill because I think you really should be Literally, and also when it comes to, oh, so Game of Thrones, Harry Potter, Star Wars, Lord of the Rings, um, Dunkirk, that was a good one because it's really slow and chill if you're doing some chill studying, um, but it's a bit like scary and airy, but one of the other things that I think is really important is um, things like caffeine and things like Ritalin and things like, I think in America there's another one, but um, I've never used anything like Ritalin, I've never used anything, I can't remember what it's called, but it's it's, it's very intense um, study drug. I don't I don't recommend those, and I don't, I don't know, maybe they work wonders, but I just, I don't think it's worth it. You can do it without study drugs, like, you just need to work harder, and you just need to be more disciplined, and that's like, it's such a shortcut, it's like taking steroids, but for studying. Maybe if you really, really need it, if you're in med school or something, but I personally didn't need it. Um, so... One thing that I think is quite useful is you do use caffeine, like I find using caffeine and using natural endorphins, like if I'm really feeling just fucking chill and like just sloping around, just feeling like this and just feeling horrible. Um, one thing that I think really helped is I would literally put on my running shoes, go for like a 10 minute run, literally 10 minute run, fast pace, go get my endorphins running, not have a shower because you know, you're just studying and then get back into studying because that just raises your endorphin levels you'd think it ties you up but it really doesn't just all that kind of stuff or well, now i wish studying started a bit later because now it's real sunny i'm really enjoying going for kayaks and that's just fucking the auckland harbor and a sunny day it's so nice so go out and do something that you enjoy for like 10 minutes literally you can do something for 10 minutes say i just started really working on my garden out there um I find that my garden was something fun to do. Like you can just move a plotter up. You can just make your garden more efficient or something like that. Um, if you do gardening and you're listening to this podcast, honestly, hit me up. 
so we can just talk go, talk gardening because I think it's fun. I don't know. I swear I'm an old man. I do investing. I do gardening. I lift weights. <laughs> um, yeah. So I recommend you do use caffeine, but make sure you sort of use it wisely because you don't want to go overboard. Because yeah, um, don't use pure caffeine. Just go ahead and go and drink a coffee. I do recommend coffee. Tea is great. I've actually been recently drinking. If you live in New Zealand, there's Halfleys. If you live elsewhere, I'm sure. I think Dilma is everywhere. There's all kinds of brands. I've been drinking tea. Um, there's lots of caffeine-free tea for at night if you just want something nice and hot to drink. And it's also a good way to treat it like a, a reward. Because if you're treating this cup of tea like a reward, then I think it's quite beneficial because it's it's not like eating a donut. Maybe if you, if you are watching your calories, you don't want to eat a donut. But drinking a cup of tea, it's nice. I think it literally has one calorie or some shit. Like this, this stuff has no calories. It tastes pretty good. It's not just like some random fit person stuff because I, I just think it's good. Um, a coffee is good. I think decaf's all right at night, but it's really not worth it. I don't think it's just like just drink, just sort of wing yourself off coffee. I used to be so like on the coffee. I'd have like four cups a day. I used to use that coffee machine to make actual coffee and have a whole thing of coffee for myself but it's just ridiculous like I started I started having heart flutters and stuff my heart would be going at like 100 beats per minute all day and it's just like you can't it just can't keep up with that but yeah I do think caffeine does have a good a really good effect on your um actual it does have a really good effect on um on your studying but yeah I'm gonna wrap this up now because I'm just zoning out a lot and yeah um also, make sure you actually do take the time to relax and you do enjoy. Try and enjoy your study time because after a while, the first, like once you and once you really get into it, it does get fun. It's because you learn new things and you got to sort of keep a positive attitude. If you start being mopey and start being like, oh, fuck, I hate studying. Why am I doing this? Then I think you need to change your degree or just change something because if every time you go to sit and study, you're like, fuck this, I hate my life. Something needs to change because if you really hate it that much, then something's got to change. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I would love if you would check me out on Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat. No, not Snapchat. Uh, Instagram, Facebook, my website. Subscribe, rate, listen to the podcast. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Please leave me feedback. I would love that. Um, yeah, thank you guys very much for listening. Study hard and have a good day.